Hello everyone. Today I'm going to demonstrate some of the advantages of programming our CMT HMIs in comparison to our non-CMT models. For demonstration purposes, I have two projects open. The first is a project in which I've selected our CMT 3072, and in the second project we have our MT 8073 IE. Now one thing I'd like to note before I close the system parameters is that several of our CMT models also have an integrated Codasys soft PLC, which is why you'll see the asterisk discussing our built-in Codasys driver on the CMT side. Closing our system parameters, you'll see I have some projects already pre-configured. One thing you'll notice is that side by side, these projects are almost identical. But they don't look completely the same. That's because our CMT models have a modern appearance in comparison to their older counterparts. This in itself is nice to have, but to take it one step further, the improvement to our object's aesthetics increases its functionality and decreases programming time. As a demonstration, we'll start off by looking within our data trend display. Selecting this object will reveal our general tab. And within this tab, you'll see we can define our x-axis data range, which as you'll see in a minute, is particularly important to our non-CMT project. Moving over to our channel tab, you'll see we have our channel visibility control, which I have configured for our 8073, but I actually don't need to for our CMT. And finally, within our Y scale tab, you'll notice I haven't selected any Y scaling on our CMT project. Not because it's not necessary, but because with our advanced CMT models, it's not necessary to pre-configure these, like within our 8073 IE. To demonstrate this, we'll run an offline simulation. At first glance, it may look like we've neglected to add some essential features, but we've actually got everything we need. That's because if you look in the top right corner of our trend display, you'll see we have an options button. Selecting this will bring up a pop-up window where we can configure the start and end date for the data displayed, configure channel visibility, or add Y scales into our project. Leaving this menu, you'll notice an additional button on the top right of our display. This button allows us to alter the range and look of our data, which is again something essential within our 8073 project. But as you can see here, with these dynamic controls, we can skip over some of the small details. Again, looking at our historical data sampling object, we have an options menu for this object as well, which allows us to narrow down the start and end date of our data displayed, which adds a dynamic feature that we wouldn't find on our non-CMT models. For a second here, I'd like to move back to our trend display to demonstrate something unique to our CMT series. Within the trend tab of our trend display, you'll see a small checkbox that allows you to enable a transparent background. Our trend display, data block display, and XY plot are the only objects that can do this. However, when creating new windows within your HMI project, you do have the option to configure the transparency of the window's background. This window could then be used as a semi or fully transparent pop-up or embedded window. I'd also like to run a quick compile on both projects just so I can give you guys an idea of the difference in project size. By project size, I'm referring to the difference in project space available. Compiling my MTIE project, you'll notice I have 10.03 megabytes of space available, whereas my CMT still has 60.39 megabytes of total free space. This is because our CMT like our MTV and XE series has 64 megabytes of space available for your project, while our IE is similar to our IP series in the sense that project size is limited to 22.5 megabytes. 
The only exception to this 64 megabyte standard for CMTs is the CMT SVR, which has 32 megabytes of project space. The next segment of our video will cover some of the convenient objects available only on our CMT series. The first specialized object I'd like to talk about is our combo button. This is probably something you've seen or used on our non-CMT models. However, our CMT's combo button has enhanced functionality. Comparing the two side by side, you can spot several differences right away. Our CMT's combo button has a user-defined list of down and up actions, whereas our non-CMT only features down actions. Our non-CMT is also limited to a set of four different types of actions, where our CMT HMI has 14 different types of actions, which was designed in part because of a new security feature on our CMT called the Control Token. The control token is a way to restrict multi-user control and is only available on the CMT's combo button. This is because it can perform pretty much any task any other object can. The next object I'd like to show is our event bar chart. The event bar chart is a different way of viewing the occurrence of event alarms within your HMI project over a period of time. And running a simulation, you'll notice, like other objects on display, there is a pre-configured menu within our object that allows us to modify certain characteristics. At this point, we'll move on and begin looking at our CMT's action trigger. The action trigger is like having a condition-dependent combo button in the sense that it can perform a user-defined list of actions sequentially uh, but of course only when triggered by a specific condition. We have two trigger modes. The first is idle timeout, where the HMI will perform the action if the HMI is left untouched for a specific period of time. And the second is value changed, or condition dependent, where the HMI will perform the specified action or list of actions based on the change of a certain condition. This feature is almost like using a logical function within our macro, except you don't need to write any code in this case. And of course, within the action trigger, one thing you'll notice is the file transfer button. Our file transfer option is available in both the action trigger and combo button. It's extremely simple to use with your local FTP server, on our demonstration screen, I'll open the combo button to reveal our configuration. You'll notice I've specified an upload from the HMI to our FTP server by specifying the following FTP information. Under the File tab, we can choose between a fixed or dynamic file and folder path. And our Status tab will allow us to view error codes and any response from our FTP server. After that, all you need to do is create the corresponding file and folder ASCII objects, the numeric status objects, and a file browser for convenience. Now you can send or receive files depending on your specified configuration. Now we'll start looking at some of the other useful tools that are available for our CMT HMIs. We'll start off with our PDF reader. Now I have a nice demo project here that shows how this works. We have our PDF viewer object and then in the top left corner we have our page count, a couple objects to switch pages, and of course our file browser. A couple things I'd like to mention, the first being that the PDF viewer is not accessible through CMT viewer. However, you can access it through VNC viewer. Also, the file browser and page buttons are not embedded in the object. Next to the PDF view object, you'll notice we have a button labeled calculator. In the past, and on other non-CMT HMIs, if you wanted a calculator, you'd have to develop one yourself using macros and custom objects. On our CMT series, this is no longer necessary 
As you'll see, we can call upon our system calculator by using a function key. This is an extra tool that is very easy to add to your existing CMT project. Next to this, we have a customizable calendar. The calendar alone is nice to have in your project, but you'll see in our calendar window how I've added some additional functionality to this object. Our contact editor is used to update your email contact information after the project has already been downloaded onto your HMI. Previously, contacts would have to be pre-configured prior to downloading your HMI project. Now with our contact editor, you can skip this step and configure email contacts for push notifications after the project has already been developed and downloaded. Now on our last window, I'd like to demonstrate something I've done with our calendar. Because the concept is here, I thought I'd develop off of it and add in a memo feature on our calendar that is cleared monthly using our scheduler function. Here an operator could type important information or save details of something that occurred outside of what the HMI is programmed to read and record. This is a simple demonstration of what an object like this could do with slight modification. Moving away from EasyBuilder Pro, I'd like to demonstrate some of the advancements within our CMT diagnoser. The first thing you'll notice in comparison to our Easy Diagnoser application is the ability to navigate through the different windows within your project. This is a useful way to narrow down and troubleshoot specific pages within your project. You also have the ability to add a watch address, which could be used in conjunction with our system registers to pull a device-specific error code, or add a PLC address to monitor data on the PLC from an address not used within your project, or not visible through CMT Viewer. Our CMT Diagnoser can also monitor tag-based PLCs, which is a major advantage to using our CMT series. Switching tabs, you can get device information. You can enable a capture to search for packet errors, or within our macro tab, if I had any macros within this project, we could execute them to ensure they function correctly. And we can also view information related to an MQTT server connection that we may have established within our project. And because there is so much more potential packed within our CMT diagnoser, we're going to create a whole video dedicated to discussing its uses and functionality. The last feature I'd like to discuss is Ethernet pass-through. Within our non-CMT HMIs, it's already possible to do a serial pass-through, but a majority of customers that I talk to tend to use Ethernet connections within their project. Which is why within our Utility Manager and within Easy Access, you have the ability to perform an Ethernet pass-through to an external device. To demonstrate this feature, I have created a very basic project using a CMT3090 that is equipped with a FaceTech PLC. A local Ethernet pass-through to the PLC can be accomplished in less than a minute, assuming your network settings are correct. I'm currently connected to my HMI through an Ethernet hub shown in the following diagram. I'll start off by opening my Utility Manager. I'm going to select CMT series in the top left corner. Now selecting the Analysis and Maintenance tab, I'll see the Ethernet pass-through option on the bottom of this menu. Selecting this, I'll configure the IP address of my HMI and the IP of the PLC we're trying to communicate to, and then click Connect. You'll see in the following dialog, we're now successfully connected. And that's all that's required to perform a local Ethernet pass-through to your PLC with a CMT HMI. If you found this tutorial helpful and would like to see more, head on over to our YouTube channel and select the Playlist tab. Feel free to check out our website as well for free demo projects, user manuals, and more. Thank you for watching.